K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to k98talk.com. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Oh, welcome to the face. Welcome to the face of the new democracy. Don't expect us to admit a mistake. We're paying off election debts to those who will take. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. All right, folks. Well, happy Thursday evening to you. It's almost Friday. We've nearly made it. Um, this is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. It is a couple minutes past 6 p.m. right here in the Central Time Zone, right here in Oklahoma City. Want to give a quick shout out to a new affiliate. If you're listening to us there, then you're hearing hearing us for the first time, and it'll be about uh, 12 p.m. Eastern, probably where you are uh, Monday. Um, that is 24/7 or AMFM247.com. Uh, the show does start airing there effective Monday. Uh, this will probably be the episode that you're hearing. So want to give you guys a big shout out let you know when you can find us and where so if you ever want to interact with us live you're more than welcome to this show always airs uh monday through friday 6 p.m central k98talk.com we have chat features also call-in features i don't use the call-in that often because it's only an hour show but I'm, i may start using it a little more often i do have a couple of guests with me this evening so i want to give them a quick shout and give them a chance to say hello I have uh, Scott Fire and JD, a friends of mine from Twitter, who have now uh, who were part of War Radio and have now uh, joined the K98Talk.com family. So, I'm going to give them a moment to say hello to everybody. We're going to use this episode as kind of an introduction for them because they do plan on broadcasting with us starting this Sunday, I do believe. Yay! Not only we broadcasting Sunday, but I got to tell you, Rick, that was the best Wayne's World intro I've ever heard. Man. It took me like. <laughs> Right back to the Iron Maiden jacket, to the yep. denim, and yeah, arcades and long hair. It was actually got me really stoked. <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> so, and and for those of you who who know me um, on the radio, I actually go by Stacy. So, um, and that's, for those who know her in real life, Jay just don't talk to you. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's nothing but love in this room. I'm telling you, nothing but love. No, no. I feel I feel outnumbered, and I feel like I'm going to be picked on mercilessly during this hour. Oh, are you are you are you kidding me? Are, no, you, you're like you're like the West Side Story. The Sharks and the Jets put together. You can more <laughs> than take care of yourself, young lady. <laughs> Actually, yes, I can. But um, we are very happy to be here on K98 Talk, Rick. We're very much looking forward to it. We will be starting our show Sunday at 11 a.m. It's called Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. What yeah. we like to do on Sundays is make fun of the mainstream media. And, oh, boy, do we have a lot to make fun of this week already. Um, and then our, our show during the week is called Game On. It's a little more serious and policy-minded, talking about what's going on with our feckless folks in Washington, D.C., on both sides of the aisle and uh, what they need to do better or different. So, But I want, I, I want everybody to keep in mind that, that both of the shows, basically, in a nutshell, are Mark Levin meets Opie and Anthony meets Metallica. So anybody out there who thinks they might enjoy some of that, um, we got it. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> okay, so... Um... 
I'm going to assume at this point that at least some of the listeners have probably uh, may not know who you guys are. So why don't you guys give them a little bit of your background, kind of what got you started uh, with this whole crazy thing that we now call Internet Radio, and just kind of give everybody a chance to get to know you a little bit. JD blames me. I um, I, 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 I lost the bet and was sold into Stacy slavery. Uh-huh. And, uh Had to pay. It, it was like a Seinfeld episode, um, but uh, <laughs> that turned into a radio show. <laughs> Basically. Um, you know, my background is I've been an executive in Fortune 500 companies. I've become increasingly disillusioned beginning in 2008 with the election of the current president. Became even more disillusioned in 2012 when we did it again. Um, and we uh, decided to take a little more serious approach to activism and decided to um, give our give a shot at a, a radio show on a platform and, and see where it went. And so far, we're having a lot of fun. And... Um, Hopefully it's going well. We think it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, absolutely. Like, I, I never thought for for an instant that I, I honestly wish I had gotten into in, in, into college radio. I mean, I spent the majority of my career uh, on Wall Street. That's right, folks. Not a proud one percenter, but striving to get there. I don't care what you think. Um, and I you know, listen. I, technologically, you know, I had an assistant for everything. So, I mean, I'm lucky I can you know take off shoes and, and answer email. Um, but after the first debate in the 2012 election uh, with Romney and Obama, I sat there as somebody who's always been, you know, I, I mean, I love history and politics. I always have. Um, and I'm a devotee of, of, of talk radio. And I know what I had just seen, but I didn't know what the rest of the world saw. And I'm from New York and I'm impatient and I want instant gratification. And I'm like, where the hell can I go and, and find, you know, what was going on? And I. Went on Twitter. I had an egg avy. I found this smart woman named Stacy Lennox. I stalked her. I scared her with my egg avy. She said, put a picture up, stupid. And, um, you know, fast forward, we've been doing radio for the last four or five months. We've become very good friends. Whatever she tells you, I did not break her ankle that time. And uh, here we are. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. The, I'm honestly, I'm fairly new to Twitter myself. I had an account for forever. I never really used it. Um, just now really started getting active with it for probably in about the last year. I'm still not really good at limiting what I want to say to 140 some odd characters or less, which is the main thing I don't like about Twitter. Also, when it gets really exciting and there's lots of conversations going back and forth, it's really hard to keep up. So, but <laughs> what can I say? Um, now... <clears throat> We do have a lot, a few things we wanted to talk about today. One of the things that, and honestly, I didn't know this until a friend of mine who actually works in terrestrial radio, radio pointed it out to me the other day. He's here in my local market, and we were talking on Facebook, and he's like, did you know it was National Law Enforcement Week? And I'm like, uh, no. So I looked it up, and sure enough, it's been National Law Enforcement Week since, like, Sunday. I haven't heard anybody say a word about that. Little no, but how many times have you heard the word climate change, social justice, or whatever kind of buffoonery, you know? Without it being mentioned, you know, that, that and how, besides the History Channel, you know, how much run was given to the 70th anniversary of V.E. Day? V.E. Day, not V.D. Day, you sick, sick people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> basically, you know, I, I picked up on the hashtag a little bit earlier this week. I, uh, you know, found it so unfortunate that that week was kicked off with such a tragedy down in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, to very good uh, young police officers just being basically gunned down. And, you know, more more news, uh, you know, published this week saying the, the death of cops on the job has doubled in 2000, between 2013 and 2014. Um, something is going on here, and I don't think we give enough recognition or, you know, thank yous even – to the vast majority of police officers in this country who are out there doing their job. No, at, at, at all. But I, I mean, this this goes back to I think what motivates the the three of us to do what we do and try and have a voice. You know, I grew up in a time and place where you respected law enforcement. I mean, I have a father who's still alive today. God bless him. If I said, "Hey, Dad, a cop kicked the hell out of me," he'd say, "Good. What'd you do?" Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you know, the, look. Cops are no different than any other segment of society. Nothing is perfect. But, you know, when you take a look at the statistics that Stacy cites, when you have you have a, an increase, whether it's in shooting at police or violence towards police or police that are getting killed, it comes down to a couple of things. We've created an environment politically and legally where the police themselves, and I'm somebody who's fortunate enough to know 
a lot of people in law enforcement, whether it's state, federal, or local. We've put these guys in a position now, depending on where you know they 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 practice law enforcement, that you know that half second that they have to that they have to take to decide of whether or not they're going to lose their house, their job, their pension over something that they know is justified could be the half second that gets them killed. You know, so until we can get ourselves back to a place where each of these cases is seen for what it is, then we have big problems. We have big societal problems. You know, it's very simple. Cops are your friends. Okay, if there's a bad cop that's doing something wrong to you, the rest of them are good cops and they are your friends. And that really is full period and stop. Full period and stop. I heard. I hear you say that a lot. I'm assuming that's like some sort of like writing thing or something. Yeah. The doctor done told me that that when the voices stop talking in my head, that's what I say. So I don't know it's time to stop talking. <laughs> well, well, I mean, <laughs> I actually saw a great interview with Sheriff Clark today. So here you have a nationally recognized police officer who's been speaking out on behalf of the hard work, the hard and good work, excuse me, the majority of police officers in the country do. Mm -hmm. um, and it was actually the longest I've ever seen him speak continuously in an interview format that um, was not a speech like he might have given at the NRA convention. And he brought out some really, really good points in terms of some of the things the officers are facing in terms of, of political and, and public reaction. And, you know, one of them is one of these folks that was shot recently, I think, J.D., was actually in New York City. Um Guy was oh, yeah. coming at a female cop with a hammer. Yeah. And, you know, the second guessing now is, well, why didn't you shoot him in the leg? Well, first of all, it's not how anybody is taught to shoot. <laughs> you shoot for center mass. And in that situation, it happens so fast, the officer has to make a judgment literally in a split second. But if somebody's coming, if somebody's coming at me with a hammer and I have a gun, I'm going to shoot. I don't know why we expect our police officers to be these like superheroes that you see in the movies that can, you know, from 700 yards hit somebody in the toe. Well, look, look you know, I, I think I think the best way that I can put it as a as, as a lifetime New Yorker, you know, I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm within, so sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, but you, listen, Me too, you, you've you know. been here. I mean, I, I'm smart enough to live by the beach, but I mean, you can see the city from my house. You know, I'm a quick run in on the train. That's where I spent the majority the majority of of my career. Um you know, forever in a day, which explains the, cops the voices. That, I'm just saying, <laughs> the, the 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 cops that I know, and the, the whether they're older, younger, you know, people that were in my family, people uh, who are friends of mine now, you know, in New York City, a city of nine million people who are on top of each other like ticks, up until the last few months, everybody would go back to the focus point of Officer uh, Daniel Byrne. Who was who was assassinated? I think it was in eighty eight uh, or eighty nine when he was um, uh, in front of that that witness's house. And now you have three, three that are assassinated and killed in the city of New York in, in the last few years. I was just having a conversation with somebody the other day that I mean I can see it on the horizon right now. People do not understand the value of leadership, whether it's local, whether it's wherever it is. Leadership are important because people are inherently by human nature followers. And this city has the same kind of leadership that we're seeing on the national level. You know, and you've taken decades of progress where New York's murder rate went from the thousands into a few hundred and you're back to a point where you have three assassinated cops because that's okay. Well, you want to know something? I don't, I'm not going to wait for the world to figure it out. That's not okay with me. I'm gone. You can keep it. But for every one of those cops that has to live out the rest of their career and the rest of their pension, you want to know what? If you're buried in one of those neighborhoods where life is cheap and your life isn't valued, drive slow and stop at yellow lights and go home to your kids. I mean, you bring up a few interesting points, and I think the thing that kind of made me realize just how bad it was, I mean, because, you know, most of us are familiar with New York. I've never actually been there. I have family that uh, tried to make a go of it there, and they wound up coming home. Lucky for them, that was back when I worked at an airline, so I was able to get them flights <laughs> there and, went, and then flights back when it fell apart. Um, but, you know, same time, it, most of my experience with New York was during the whole 9-11 situation, uh, seeing Giuliani kind of 
step into the spotlight. And he truly, for at least a little while, a lot of folks viewed him as America's mayor. And then you've got this new guy, the blah, 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 as I like to call him, um, who basically, you know, was telling people at a press conference that he was telling his children, you know, you have to be careful around the police. You never know what they're going to do because you, yeah. you look different than they do. What? You're their boss, jackass. Hello. But you, 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 you want to know something, though? It, go, it goes back to leadership because I'm going to tell you something. It's a different city now. And, and if you go back, I mean, you could smell what happened downtown for months, okay? And New York City was a changed place. But the people there was – it didn't – there were no politics, you know? Um, even with the Iraq war, you could stand on the corner, you know, after a 9-11 memorial and, and have a discussion about Iraq who, who, with people who completely disagreed. But think about the type of leadership that you had. You had a president who, regardless of what you thought about his policies, respected the office and understood this country's place in the world. And in the city of New York, you had a mayor who took it to one of the safest cities in the history of Western civilization to have that many people living on top of each other. Okay, 14 short years later, after all the hard work that's done, it has not taken that much for the city to take a turn back to the 1970s. Whether it's stopping, stop and frisk or the rest of the ass hatted nonsensical buffoonery that that goes on. You know, the, the point that the point that I keep making is that everybody talks about it, things being very Orwellian and 1984. I don't think so. I think it's much more Aldous Huxley and Brave New World. I really do. And I think this is I, I, I think it's a distinction with a difference. And and to me, you can keep it. I mean, I've made a decision to leave everything that I've grown up around to literally move to a redder state. I can't be the only person. So in how many short years have we completely balkanized a nation where you have lifelong residents of a place who would put up with what went on, who literally said, you want to know what? No way. Not for me, Jack. That's not healthy. Yeah, I mean, well, and- I, I saw you mention something about that on Twitter last night. I was... Uh, joking around with you about Texas and where else and you're like in oddly enough Texas wasn't even on the list everybody that I talked to from New York uh, well, only because in that the direction seems only to be Texas. Stacey, Stacey explain it to him explain it to him <laughs> he has to live within like one block of waves he can surf on <laughs> that that's really it but I mean on the upside when Texas does secede from the union we actually got a guarantee from Rep. Louis Gohmert when we interviewed him over the weekend that we get passports to Texas so well, that's what we bring it to that K98 talk baby Moisey Moisey as a matter of fact <laughs> the first guest that we're uh that we're bringing is going to be uh I think Judith Miller I think it will Evan say who's who let's see there uh well Evan say or Judith Miller one or the other Aha, you can't go wrong, Bubba. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just excited to have you guys. I mean, because honestly, um, we were, we, I mean, we've been around for a while. I, I don't know how many folks know how long I, that I myself have been doing this, but I mean, it's not as long as some, but uh, in current iterations, we've been doing this since about mid 2012. Um, and. Started building things up pretty well, and then always got to the point where we felt like it was about to take off, and then it just kind of the, the head of steam stopped. The last few months, it seems like every time I think, well, it's gone about as far as it's going to go, something else kicks off. Which is uh, the other day, I was like, well, I've got the conference coming up, so that's awesome. And then we've still got Bunny's group that's putting, bringing in all this new content, and then I get the call from you, and I'm like, wasn't expecting that, and now I've. <laughs> Now I'm fielding messages from all over, just so you know, because I've got, like, emails coming in and direct messages from other folks that are like, hey, I'm like, oh, my Lord, I may have to hire a staff. <laughs> well, if, 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 you're looking for, if you're looking for steam, Moisey, Moisey, you and I are real steamy, ain't we, baby? <laughs> oh, um, I think I need, I think <laughs> Really? See, there it starts. That it just started. Everybody heard it. Everybody heard me say I'm going to be picked on. There it goes. Where did I put that mental scrub brush? <laughs> I know it's got to be here somewhere. Oh, then go find your own damn steam. <laughs> so, um, no, but seriously, we're very happy to be here. We've certainly known for quite some time, uh, Miss. Polita Bunny. Uh, she's been a, a good tweep of mine for a couple years now, so we are excited to be back on a home with her. Um, we think it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. If you're not having fun, why do it? So, yay! Um, See, that's but, not always you know, been my thing. And 
you know, that's that's the thing I keep. I, I know some folks that have been involved in other online stations, and that's the thing that I keep hearing is at some point it just it stopped being fun. And I don't care how big we get. If we ever stop having fun, somebody just shoot me. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that live on the air now, and this statement will go out over 7 a.m. FM stations on Monday. If we ever stop having fun, then somebody just shoot me because there's no point in doing this if you're not having no. fun. Yes, I want to make a difference, but I want to enjoy it while I'm doing it. And if I start being one of those guys that's walking around with a stick up my butt, somebody just put me out of my misery, please, because well, I'm not that guy. And I think one of, the th- one of the things we try to do is is we do try to make it fun for the audience. You know, we use crazy sound effects, and, you know, we have these – two to three fabulous guys who write parody songs, uh, lyrics, and we have a guy who writes a weekend update for us, kind of on the old Chevy Chase, you know, weekend news from Saturday Night Live. Eric Williams so, at BobWyasatire.com, baby. Yep, and our two musicians are Beaker O'Donovan and yeah, Senegal. So, um, and, you know, we're really trying to make points, but do it in an entertaining enough way so that you don't always feel like you're being talked to. Because if you're not, you're NPR. I, I mean, it, it, it's that it, it's that simple. You know, it's it's you have to you have to entertain the people are not going to stick around for the message. And you want to know something? If you are so serious, if you if you if you are so damn serious that you can't smile and laugh at yourself or at another conservative or at a liberal or whatever, you want to know what? I, I, Change the station, change it because you you I I don't I don't know how you get up and look at yourself every day in the mirror, okay? Life is exceedingly short, and there are only so many damn smiles that you get, you know. And there's a lot of work that goes into this, and we all do this because of how concerned we are about things that are happening. So I'm going to tell you something, Jack. It's the old Wall Street mantra, man: work hard, play hard. Okay? If I'm going to put as much work into this, I want to have some fun, baby. I know Stacy does. Do you know? Do you know the nonsense that she puts up with from me, personally oh, on the. I mean, forget it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's awful. You know? Yeah, it's. I'm what, a victim. I'm a uh, victim, uh, Rick. I'm gonna play a leftist. She, I'm not a leftist, but I play one on the radio. She refuses to accept her role. <laughs> well, that's I great. I'm not this. a leftist, look, but I play one on the radio. That's awesome. I <laughs> I, I promised I promised her a long time ago. I would never bring up my motivational midget theory for America, and I won't. But she has to accept the fact that, like it or not, you can't get away from me, and you are my life coach. Mm-hmm. Yep. So wait, yep. wait. I, thing, I know you promised thing. her, so I'm not going to ask you to go too far into it, but motivational midget, no. what? No, 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 no. 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 You, you get to know Stacey Lennox, and you go back on a promise that you made to her. Good luck for you, Ricky. Uh-uh, not this guy. Uh-uh, I ain't falling for this. No, worth the shot. I mean, come on. You, you use the words motivational and midget in the same sentence, and you didn't think I was at least going to try to ask? I mean, come the on. Only, the only proposed federal program I've ever supported. Yeah. He can tell you about the, the Ebola monkey, though. The host monkey. <laughs> no, they, first of all, it was the host monkey. So, okay. So, <laughs> one, one of the you want to know now, now that I come to think of it, after you bounced me out of my own host seat a few weeks ago, you know, I was sicker on that show. What would, that was like one of the first few shows that we did, right? About number mm-hmm. three or four or something, right? Mm-hmm. And you I played went, all the wrong clips. You had a fever of like 104. Yeah, I had Ebola. Like, remember back when, when, when everybody, it, I mean, it, it, when Ebola was everywhere after, you know, the world was fine. Obama got elected. And oh, my God, Ebola. Um, but I was like, you know, I, it, it had to be Tuesday night because it was the game on show. And uh, you know, I got up in the morning. And she's like, hey, dude, I'm like, oh, you know, I feel I honestly, by the time we went on the air, I was like in a tub of ice. My fever was still 4006. And I had no idea what the hell was going on. And I produced the show. I'm playing the Not wrong- that night. No, yeah, I, I'm playing the wrong clips. I don't know what's going on. And we actually use a clip of that in our promo because this poor girl is trying to do a segment that we had set up. I played the completely wrong music bump into it. And she's like, well, that's supposed to be. And I just shut it off. And I started saying that there was the host monkey because I had a bite. It's really a complete feverish meltdown of a fit. Yeah. Which basically happens once a show. So, oh, only once a show. I have those like every time I have to take a break. Oh no, those are mini strokes. No, 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 no. What 
when JD goes into a into a rant, which he does about once a show, depending on the topic. Not so much on Sundays, but definitely during the weekdays. I'm not a morning person. That's especially, <laughs> especially, especially if we're talking about the Durka Durka Durkas. And if you have followed us before, mm-hmm. exactly, you know exactly who that is. That's all the crazy people over in the Middle East burning stuff down. And what do they um, want? Virgins. Thanks. Um, but anyway, I can't do it like Scottso does. But, um, you know, he'll go off on a rant and you'll literally hear him bang the desk. And I just go, well, J.D., tell us how you really feel. I mean, you can't control him. Yeah, I had I had the I had the mic filter pop off the arm when I hit the desk. And we, <laughs> so we do the show by Skype. So it's like being in the studio together. And I'm like, God damn it. Boom. And the thing comes up and hits me in the grill. <laughs> and I went on mute because I started to laugh. So. <laughs> um, the nice. other thing we just want to get out of the way on this platform early. Yes, please. J- set it JD, up. JD and I are not married, but However, we do have a radio show. We do have a radio show. <laughs> Almost every conference we went to because of our interaction on the air, they're like, oh, where are you guys from? JD will go, I'm from New York. I'm from Georgia. And then they look back and forth between us and we just all of a sudden go, yeah, no, we're not married. No. And, and the thing <laughs> is, I'm going to tell you something. There are people now. So between CPAC, Right Online, uh, the NRA conference, we it, it, there are people now who have gotten to know us. And just think we're telling people that we're not married as a cover story so people in the movement don't think we're married. We're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> you know, it's we've been divorced six times. But just, just never <laughs> no. from each other. No, we haven't. <laughs> we never even dated. <laughs> oh, the seeds were planted. They can clip it. Media Matters has it. It's over. <laughs> Headline tomorrow on Got News: Conservative radio pair have been married and divorced six times. <laughs> Where's my alimony? Damn it! <laughs> oh, <laughs> you guys are a mess. All right, folks, it is the bottom of the hour. We're gonna have to take a really quick break, and we will be right back. Again, I am joined today by. Uh, Stacy and JD, hosts of uh, Bloody Marys and Broadsheets, as well as, and sorry, the other one's escaping me for the moment. I don't have it pulled Game up. on, baby. Game on. The home is libertarian conservatarian. Stacy, what is no one? No one is safe and no one is spared. Not even the host. Mm-mm. All right, folks, we'll be right back here in just a couple minutes. The internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. Mark your calendar for May 21st through the 23rd for the Southern Republican Leadership Conference in Oklahoma City. K98 Talk's Rick Robinson and Grouchy from the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show will be there to cover each day's events. Join them at the conference to hear keynote Republican speakers. Now, here's Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon. On behalf of the Oklahoma Republican Party and the entire Southern Republican Leadership Conference Committee, welcome to Oklahoma City, ranked by the National Geographic as one of the must-see places in the world in 2015. I'm Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon, and the road to win back the White House begins in Oklahoma City with a Southern Republican Leadership Conference. 
Your participation in this historic conference is crucial to the conservative cause and energizing America. The 2016 presidential election promises to be the most important election in our lifetime, and the choices that we make in the next two years will define America for the next generation. We're excited to host you in Oklahoma as we begin our shared Republican journey towards capturing the White House and getting this country back on track. Don't miss this opportunity to hear well-known leaders from the Republican Party as they discuss the upcoming presidential race for 2016 and where they stand on issues facing America today. It starts May 21st and runs through the 23rd. To register, go online to okgop.com or contact the Oklahoma Republican Party. Seats are going fast, so register today. All right, folks, we're back. We're live. This is America Off the Rails. Again, this is a very special episode where I am joined by uh, JD and Stacy, uh, hosts that have recently joined the K98talk.com lineup. Just wanted to take a moment to let you guys uh, get to know them a little bit better. Also, this is the inaugural episode for us over on a new affiliate for Off the Rails. Um, amfm247.com so if you're listening there again you'll be able to hear this show every Monday uh, um, pre-recorded obviously from uh, I believe it is 1 p.m. Eastern 12 Central all right so um, for those of you who are following along on either iHeart or uh, tune in you may not actually be able to see the title of the show the title for this one is Thin Blue Line Thursday we're doing this show in honor of the fact that it is apparently National Law Enforcement Week although you wouldn't know that from the media. Um, so we do have a few uh, law enforcement related stories. I figured we would jump straight into those because I know that JD's got to jump off here in a little bit to get uh, to doing some production type stuff. So <clears throat> anyway, I'm done talking. That was really long winded. Just saying. It's OK. I, we, 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 un we understand Phil. So when it's time to fill air, what we do is we tell the audience things about Stacy that nobody knows. <laughs> Oh, dear Lord. Let's go back to the thin blue line, please. <laughs> um, you know, I will say the mainstream media has not covered this really at all. And I actually haven't seen what a it. shock. But I mean, I haven't even seen a lot about it in the conservative media. I mean, you see it on Twitter and there's a hashtag. And there's people posting pictures of the events in D.C. and, you know, the memorials and you know the the candlelight vigil that were last that the candlelight vigil excuse me that was last night but you know when i'm scrolling through my news orgs they're not really talking about it you know i i think there's an element that and, you know look, conservatives are, are smart and and they're quick to catch up we're quick to catch up but Everything, ha you know, we, we, we had Jay Koss recently and we were speaking in his book, A Republic No More. There isn't much that doesn't eventually become institutionalized. And I think this goes back to what we were saying about whether it's Sam Janney and Politibunny as Politibunny or whether it's, you know, any of the, 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 the off the rails or whatever other show, the other shows here in K98. I think Angie and Paul, you know, it, you you need to keep things fresh. Otherwise, it becomes institutionalized. And there is an element of conservative media. And Stacey and I have seen it ourselves that has fallen into that people people are susceptible by human nature to looking at things as destinations instead of stepping stones and conservative certain conservative media are not um you know they they're not they they they're not excused from that you know so i think that it takes fresh voices like yours like stacy's like the people in chat like Red Nation Rising or like the other organizations out there who keep us reminded that, you know, being that conservatives can be individualists, we need to create community by supporting just weeks like this. You know, the three of us are making the audience aware. Well, everybody in the audience should make somebody else aware. 
And you know what you should do because everybody has an iPhone now? Put it in your calendar. That's right. You could literally sit here right now and go to this time next year and say, hey, man, this is National Law Enforcement Week. You can even set a reminder to remind you of it. Not because you don't appreciate it, but because you realize that it's our job to deliver the message to other people. Go hug a cop. Don't wrestle for his gun and tell try him, to tell kill him. Tell him you're going to do it first, though. Don't yeah. Him. <laughs> yeah, you know. But you know what I'm saying? So, wait, everybody it, it, has an iPhone? No love for Android? Just saying. I, are I they, are they, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Smartphone. And t- uh, 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 uh. I'll say it because I think Apple's the long shot. Hey, Android, you want a big nationally syndicated platform? You want everybody to start saying everybody uses Android? Then check out K98 Talk, baby. Until then, we're going to assume everybody uses an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, you know, oh, I think, selling. Oh. I think, you know, even Veterans Day, VE Day, um, now we have, you know, National Law Enforcement Week. The military and the police, to, the lar- to a large extent, are the people who keep us safe. And in the case of the military, they keep people who keep us free. And there is so little celebration. I mean, when I'm in an airport and I see an officer, you know, an officer, an enlisted person in uniform, I say thank you for your service. Mm-hmm. Um, that's unusual, it seems, for them because they seem extremely warmed by it. I think there's a segment of the population that does that, um, but not enough of us. It's like the sacrifices they make, the things that they deal with that nobody else on earth would want to deal with. Mm-hmm. When you think about going into some of these neighborhoods like Southside Chicago, areas of Detroit that are literally war zones. For 42 5 Yeah, for, for not a lot of money. In, in a state like Illinois. It, it, it's not like they're out there killing it. You know, I, I, I mean, it, it's, look, the guys that are doing this job, you, you want to know why, you want to know why Officer Moore was just killed at 25 years old from Massapequa in New York City? Do you want to know why he was killed? Do you want to know why he was killed? Oh, because I know, I know at least a dozen people like this personally. You want to know why? Because with all the opportunities and everything that he could have done, he comes from a good town in a comfortable neighborhood in Massapequa, but his father and his uncle and his brothers were cops. And do you know what he had to do? You know what he made when he, when he, made, he came on the job? Probably not enough to live on his own. And you know what he was doing for that? Kicking in doors in some of the most godforsaken places that are outside of an international war zone. Why? Because his family had a calling to do it. Because he was serving. And for everybody in communities who want to raise a fuss, am I sitting here trying to paint the cops out to be perfect? No, I'm not. Are there bad elements? Yes, there are. But until communities realize that these people are there to serve and to give and not to take, you're going to drive people like that away. And the only reason that the Moore family is mourning a dead 25-year-old because he's one of the few people his age who understood and answered a calling. And it's too damn rare, and it cost him his life. Yeah, I mean, you made some really good points. And Stacey, I want to kind of go come, go back to something you said earlier about, you know, people have this misconception about, you know, about the lady that was saying something like, well, why didn't you shoot, shoot for his leg? Or, you know, you've, you've made some good points all throughout. And I think one of the things that we're not really touching on is the fact that society has made people view the cops exactly as they appear in a lot of TV shows. They look like they can dodge bullets. They can, they can basically shoot out a tire from a thousand yards. So everybody just assumes, well, because you know, that's the way they're depicted on TV, that all of them should be able to basically handle themselves in a situation. They're always going to be able to make the right choice. They're always going to be able to shoot somebody from a thousand yards and injure them instead of having to kill them. And it goes back to a, a bigger problem, I think, systemically throughout society, because even if you go all the way back to the issue um, in Ferguson, the biggest problem with Ferguson was that young man had never had anybody stand up to him before. I guarantee you his parents didn't stand up to him. Right. So he had a police officer who was doing his job, tried to stand up to him, and he was one of those kids, I guarantee you, who grew up that the louder he got and the meaner he got and the madder he got, anybody he dealt with backed down. The cop couldn't back down, so the kid died for it. The problem is systemic everywhere at this point. And the biggest issue that we really have going on right now is the simple fact of the matter is you're right. Nobody respects anybody who makes a sacrifice for us at all anymore. I mean, yes, there by nobody, I mean in general. There are lots of folks that 
will stop and tell cops, you know, love what you're doing here. I'm going to buy you your lunch, whatever the case may be. Speaking of which, since it is National Law Enforcement Week, that would be a good way to top it off. At some point, if you see a cop, offer to buy him, you know, even if you don't, you don't even have to tell him you're going to do it. Just, you know, be like, hey, when he comes up to order, I want to go ahead and take care of it for him. He didn't have to right, know you're, to buy you're him the one that car. did it. What? I said, that's right. Offer to buy him a car. <laughs> um, I might be able to afford to give him a matchbox. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I think a lot well, of the, I, I think um, Go ahead, sorry I was going to say, I think, you know, again, watching Sheriff Clark In like a really serious 15 to 20 minute interview today I think it is the most balanced view I've seen Of what the conversations in this country need to be Around some of the problems we're seeing with Between police and citizens in our inner cities I mean, he said you know, you had a, a guy over a guy down in Mississippi use a gun. You had some whack job up in New York coming at somebody in the, with a hammer. It's not what's in their hand. It's what's in their head. The behavior is the problem. And for all the morons who are screaming, these incidents scream for, you know, greater gun control. No, 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 no. Those people are criminals. They'll still have guns and they're, they're still going to have hammers. But what we have to start looking at is the broader issues within those communities and how to fix those. And unfortunately, it's not always pouring a ton of money into them. That's right. I mean, one of the best points to make is that since the death, no, since the last night of the riots in Baltimore as of 48 or 72 hours ago, there were 25 young black men shot by other young black men. Mm -hmm. And there were not 25 different delegations sent from the Justice Department and from the White House. You want to know why? Because they don't give a damn. Because it's about narrative. Until we get to a point where the value of life and the price that somebody puts on it is no longer delineated by what community you may or may not walk or drive into, we have a much serious problem. And, and, and that goes directly to Stacy's point. No, I completely agree. Uh, like I said, uh, the biggest issues we have going on right now in this country are basically systemic. And I think, honestly, I think part of it, and this, this is where my tinfoil hat will come out a little bit, because uh, I am a little bit of a conspiracy nut. I don't advertise it often, and it's not something I usually focus on. But I think the administration might be using the unrest that's uh, happening all over the place now to try to push a narrative about needing to nationalize the police force. And that, that concerns oh. me. Absolutely. Not only are they using it to push a narrative about needing to nationalize the police force. And for those of you who don't know, we have a national police force. It's called the FBI. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we have one. And, and the Bureau of Land Management, evidently. Well, yeah, and the Bureau of Land Management. And, you know, I think even the IRS has guns now, but we don't need a national police force. We have one. And wait, oh, by the way, wait, the IRS, know? the IRS has guns. All right. You guys keep like talking. You guys keep talking. I got to vest up. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, <laughs> we 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 have, you know, the Secret Service. Look at the problems endemic to those. So we're going to spread those across the nation. OK, there you go. But it's not just the narrative where they want to nationalize the police force. And, you know, as well as I do, Al Sharpton is Obama's mouthpiece on this stuff. And he went to Baltimore and said it. Can we tell them? No, we have to. We say don't want to scare Rick. OK. All right. So, you know, but what what it's also doing is it's it's increasing that level of identity politics. Right. So I am a racist and a schmuck. Because I say the riots in Baltimore are bad, even if I also say, you know, what happened to Freddie Get Gray looks a little weird. I'd like to know more about that because it seems odd, you know. So I can't say I have a problem with what happened to Freddie Gray, and I have a problem with the rioting. It's almost like you have to pick one side or the other to be considered credible. But I'm listen, the point that you make is perfect. The point that you make is perfect because you understand this. We understand this. What happens is, look, conservatives, the right, libertarians, what have you, for the most part have not gotten to the point where they recognize that the left has weaponized politics and dissent. Everything that the left does is a fight to the death battle. Conservatives and libertarians inherently are, oh, look, I'm going about my business. I'm paying my mortgage. I'm being successful. I'm enjoying my life. I'm going on vacation. God, I love my family. Oh, wait, 
what what's going on? Iraq. Okay, we'll deal with this. And then that's a one off thing. And then now I'm doing my family and that gay marriage. Oh, here's another fire. And da, 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 immigration where they don't understand until we get to a point where people understand that this is a full on locked and loaded double barreled war of ideas. Then I'm going to tell you something. We can all pack up and go home right now because we're going to lose. Now, I know Stacy, and I think I know what your answer is, Rick. That's unacceptable to me. Yes, I, Fail- I, I will not be punished for wrong thoughts, and anywhere I am is a free speech zone. Damn straight. <laughs> you know? I, I mean, I, I <laughs> it's getting to the point. And look, we, we uh, the right has to get over themselves as well. You know, we, we were making this point a few weeks ago. You know, there was a point in time before I did political radio that after um, after 9-11, I did stand up for a while in New York City, you know. But there are some people who, who, who like and hear what I have to say today, but if they had seen a clip or a video of me doing stand-up, might have heard me say something that they thought was so, so one-off offensive and doesn't pass the purity test that they'd, they'd lock you out. You know, everybody out there, open up a little bit. Well, no, because we can't keep we can't keep dividing people and dividing you by cops and citizenry or that's right. You know, white and black or you're American rich and poor. We can't do that if you lighten up in order for the left to be successful in this narrative. Everything has to be a problem. You know, President Obama, no, President Obama calls Senator Warren by her first name and gets accused of being sexist. What? Yeah, like he should have just called a Focahontas. Yeah, that's probably right. But, I mean, I just think so much. <laughs> yeah, that language, would have went over so much better than, yeah, never mind. Yeah. So much of the language and so much of the narrative, um, especially around law enforcement, is being reinforced by very senior political leaders. What kind of statement does it make that for every one of these victims, despite their own actions and behavior, which in many cases led to their own death, okay, how many folks from the White House have attended those funerals? Thank and how, you. How many attended? How many, how many DOJ reps were there at, at Officer Moore's funeral? How many are there going to be at the funerals down in Mississippi? The answer is zero, and that is disgusting. Thank you. And it's the same point of understanding things that are getting weaponized. I mean, not to not 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 to shift points on the on, on the topic, but think about you know the the statements that that Stacey is saying the the leaders on the left are making. Now think of what you've heard in the last twenty four hours after the Amtrak crash. It's a war, folks. These people don't care that there were eight people died. They don't care how it happened. Up, oh, look, opportunity, infrastructure. Ah, ah. Somebody yeah, I mean, take these idiots and smack them in the face and say it wasn't that long ago, jackass, that when people in this country died in a horrific accident, it didn't matter whether you were a Democrat, a liberal, a conservative, a Buddhist, a Mooney, who the hell cared? You sat there and you took it all in. And, I'm and there, was you some kind, there was some kind of national mourning. Thank you. We Which there should be. I mean, it, this was a national tragedy. That's why I, I, I really don't understand what's happened. I mean, it's it's one of the things that I've said for about probably about the last maybe ten years. There's just one morning I got up and I suddenly felt like I had suddenly woke up in the twilight zone. And every morning I get up, it seems like I've slid that much further in. I don't remember a time in my life where something like that happened and it instantly turns into a political battle. It, you know, I mean, ma- maybe we'll, we'll, a week of at least, you know, hey, you know, condolences, flags, whatever. And now and, and then maybe the knives come out. But instantly, Rick, when nobody's when when ever, listen, when nobody's a citizen because everybody's a citizen and nobody has to work because those who work will give you what you want, we no longer have a national sense of self or identity. And not only that, you know, when we we actually will sometimes have somebody from the liberal left on our show because we find it fun. Yes. Um, so we, we chatted with Ron Fournier, and one point that he makes is all of a sudden everybody has this democracy with a little D. We're all given the opportunity to talk to each other, and we haven't figured out how to do it yet. So oh, there's I mean, a, there's a point at which you can be you can disagree without being disagreeable, but some 
much of what goes on in the conversation in social media platforms and the media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, comes down to just being downright disagreeable. Um, I swear to God, first presidential debate that I see goes negative. Turn it off. I don't even want to see it. People are great at talking. They're horrible at communicating. Well, you know, uh, you bring up a good point because I am actually an avid proponent of free speech. I personally think that there you can't have free speech if there's going to be a word but following what you're about to say. Uh, so right. much so that we actually do have a couple of liberal hosts that do shows here. Uh, one of them really? co- co-hosts with me, and then there's one that I used to do this show six days a week. I used to do Finding Common Ground at 9 in the morning Saturday, which we still do, which has a liberal co-host. I think of us as the low-rent uh, Hannity and Combs. And then his, his show right after that is opinion, is Opinion Nation. And, you know, it used to be great. And everybody would I, – I would get, like, hate mail about, why do you have liberals on your show? When you try to do a radio show six days a week and you've got a liberal that comes on right before your two-hour show that you used to do on Saturdays, he does all your research for you. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, what I, what I want to do – and I'm going to have to – I'm going to jump here in a second to, uh, to, to produce another show. I want to thank Rick Robinson, K98 Talk. Uh, Sam Janney, Polita Bunny, who we've known for a long time, um, and I'm I, I'm going to speak for Stacy a little bit here. We are very happy and excited to be here. We couldn't be more so. And just to leave on the point that you were making, I saw Dennis Miller in uh, in the sands about 20 years ago, and he was doing a show, and I think he put it best. And he goes, you know, cha cha. I never understood why anybody would hate somebody because of their race or their creed or if their sexual orientation. But if you just give the average person 10 minutes to talk to you, you can just hate them for being an ass. Hey, guys, it's been great. I got to go. Thank you very much. Join us Sunday, 11 a.m. here on K98 Talk for Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. Stacy, I'll talk to you in the real world in a little while. All right. Good night. Bye, kids. Looking forward to it, man. You take care. Later. And at that point, I think we actually lost Stacy too, but we are down to the last couple of minutes of the show anyway. I want to give everybody a big shout out. And again, uh, make sure that you uh, tune in this Sunday for their inaugural episode. And then they'll be airing uh, Tuesdays and Thursday nights as well um, right here on K98 Talk. And we do have uh, lots of negotiations in the works. So we hope what you're, uh, what you're, you like what you're hearing tonight. Sorry, I kind of got flustered when I realized my other guest dropped with him. But anyway, so this will about do it for this episode. I do want to take a couple of minutes just to give everybody a little bit of a heads up. Uh, do notice we've got quite a few people hanging out in the chat. Sadly, I produced this show, so I wasn't able to hang out with you. Um, I am working on that, but so far my computer doesn't like to have so many windows open. Also notice we've got quite a few live listeners. So for those of you that are listening right now, we are, uh, Grouchy and myself, the host of the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show, are going to be at the Southern Republican Leadership Conference starting actually a week from today. What we're wanting to do is get as many of your questions as possible, whether they come through email, uh, social media tweets, direct messages, I don't care. We just want to make this as interactive for you as possible. So if you have questions that you've always wanted to ask these presidential hopefuls or anybody else that we get the chance to interview, make sure that you shoot us an email. You can reach me at ricky at the spark radio network dot com. You can also uh, tweet me at uh, at double at double underscore r underscore okc if you want to shoot me a friend's request on facebook you're more than welcome to do that as well it is uh, www.facebook.com forward slash rowdy vicky robinson that is my show and my professional profile very few people get access to my my real one but i do spend quite a bit of time on that one so send me a friend's request hit me up we'll talk we'll hang out we'll have fun um but yeah so make sure if you have questions because again this is the first time that we've tried to do anything like this. I've been active as far as being a voice for years now, but I've never really actually started moving into the activism realm until recently when I felt like we were finally established enough where I could try to branch out and try to continue to do to use what we've been building here to actually start trying to make a difference. So I threw a Hail Mary, and the next thing I know, Grouchy and I got press credentials, and we're going to be there. He'll be there all three days. I will only be there for two. My son graduates on Saturday, so I will have to bow out that day. But if you have questions, if you have concerns, if there's things that you want these hopefuls to know, make sure you hit us up. We're here to be your voice. That's what this has always been designed to be. I don't just want to be, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to be, like, at some point in the realm of Hannity and, uh, rush or whatever but no matter how big this gets or how small it stays the point is we always want to make 
us your voice. That's why we have hosts of all stripes here. We have libertarians, we have a few liberals, we have a vastly, largely growing number of conservative hosts at this point. Do hope to have a few more announcements here in the next few days. Um, but at this point, this will do it for this episode of America Off the Rails. Do want to thank everybody for tuning in. Actually, if the numbers keep looking like this, then I may actually start open up, open, opening up the phone lines more often. Get paid to talk for a living. Can't seem to pull it off. Isn't that amazing? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and shut things down for the night, folks. Thanks for everybody who's been tuning in. Now, if you are tuning in uh, through the server, which is running either on the uh, website or through TuneIn. Here in a second, you're going to hear a replay of the Liz Harrison radio show. We're going to go ahead and let that run in its entirety. And then here in just a little bit, you will hear Voices of Global Freedom Radio. I was actually on uh, that show this past Saturday for a few minutes uh, with another uh, radio uh, general manager or um, programming director, who is uh, considering running our content there as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that later or check it as out as a podcast. It will drop here in a little bit one way or the other. Um, but make sure at this point that if you like what you're hearing, send us, get, get involved. Send us messages. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't like. That way, this is for you guys. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would sit here, if I even if I knew nobody was listening, I would do this because it's, that's how much I enjoy it. And that's... The point is, you know, I, I do it because I think it matters. And no matter what, that's what I'm going to keep doing. But now that I know there are people that listen and our numbers keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger every day, in part because we keep bringing such, keep managing to bring such great people in here, like JD, Stacy, and before that it was Sam Janney and her entire political Bunny crew. They've been amazing. Um, and they've brought a lot of new life in for this station and for me because, like I said, there were times when it would get to the point where it was going and then it would stop. And I think we've kind of hit the point now where we've got a good head of steam going and it's in part due to the teams that we've managed to bring in, which has only happened because of the folks like you that are listening right now that listen to us every single day. I went a little more into shop talk than I usually like to do on the show, but since we do have a new listening audience that will be hearing this one, I wanted to give them a little bit better of an idea of what it is we're doing here at K98 Talk and why it is that we do what we do. Again, um, for anyone who's wondering, I am Rick Robinson. I'm the host of America Off the Rails. I am the programming director here at K98Talk.com. And a, a few of the shows now, because we are getting so many more, that we produce are actually uh, owned and operated by my particular network, which is the SparkRadioNetwork.com. You can find me anywhere you want, pretty much. Again, social media, Facebook, just search for Rowdy Ricky, should pop right up. Uh, Twitter, uh, at double underscore R underscore OKC. Um, I have Instagram. I'm too old, don't know what the heck you use it for, but I set one up anyway. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn for you business-minded folks, which seems to be where most of you are. Just search uh, Rick Robinson. Should pull right up. Make sure you're, if you might want to make sure you're following me on Twitter first so you can see what I look like because I noticed there's a lot of Rick Robinsons on LinkedIn. But anyway, that will do it for us tonight. I have talked your ear off long enough. I have other things I need to tend to. The missus has injured herself, so I am responsible for dinner. You guys have a great night, and I will be back with you tomorrow night live right here, 6 p.m. on K98talk.com. Game over, man. It's game over.